A very good evening to you and many thanks for joining us on tonight's edition of The Big Story. My name is Sharon Momani. Tonight, the Attorney General Professor Gidu Muigai has declared the formation of NASA-initiated People's Assemblies unconstitutional, null and void. On the opposition call to Swain Raila Odinga, the custodian of the rule of law states that the government cannot accept any notification on a treasonable action. Professor Mwigai has warned that counties which already passed the motion on people's assembly risk a surcharge and a revision of their budgets. Let's listen in. There have been media reports suggesting that following the swearing in of the president and his deputy, after the repeat presidential election, there is proposed to be another swearing in of another person or persons on the 12th of December uh, uh, this year. Now, I want to start by saying, for the avoidance of any doubt, that the Constitution of Kenya provides in clear terms in Article 2, sub Article 2, that no person may claim or exercise state authority except as authorized under the Constitution. No person may claim or exercise state authority as ex as, except as authorized by the Constitution. A swearing in of any person, any person, not lawfully declared to have won an election by the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, and a swearing in that is not conducted by the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya is a process wholly unanticipated by the Constitution and is null and void and illegal ab initio. I hope I have made that absolutely clear. Father, and in addition, the criminal law of the Republic of Kenya, and in addition, the criminal law of the Republic of Kenya in Article 40 of the Penal Code provides or stipulates that that sort of process is high treason. It is high treason in respect of the person so involved and any other person facilitating that process. Similarly, those assemblies are institutions totally unknown to the Constitution of Kenya and totally unknown to the County Governments Act. They have purportedly been established in violation of the Constitution and the law. Parliament has not delegated any power of that nature. The county governments have no power to create institutions of that nature. What is the consequence therefore? The consequence is that these institutions are unconstitutional, they are illegal, they are null and void. All right, so the Attorney General there quoting both the Constitution and the Penal Court, saying that the move to swear in Raila Odinga would be both criminal and unconstitutional. And so let's just take a look at what the law says about uh, treason. And uh, treason uh, for any person uh, who owing allegiance to the Republic in Kenya or elsewhere, a compasses, imagines, or invents devices or intends the deposing by unlawful means of the president from his position as president or from the style, honor, and name of head of state and commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the Republic of Kenya, or also the overthrow by unlawful means of the government and expresses, utters, or declares any such compassings, imaginations, inventions, devices, or intentions by publishing or any printing or writing or by any overt act or deed is guilty of the offense of prison. 
also any person who is guilty of the offense of treason shall be sentenced to death. And we have NASA lawyer and CIA Senator James Orengo uh, who will be joining us later for his comments on the developments from the top legal office. And also here in studio I shall be speaking to legal minds uh, just to try to understand exactly the law uh, clearer uh, with this move to have Raila Odinga sworn in as president. But right now, I want to cross over to our lead reporter tonight, uh, senior political affairs reporter Duncan Haemba, who's joining us live from the Kempinski Hotel. Duncan. Sharon, yes, we are in Westlands. We, were, we went to Kempinski, but we've again moved. So we are somewhere in Westlands uh, trying to get hold of uh, NASA uh, uh, top leaders who are in a meeting. We've been able to establish uh, where they are, what they are up to, and uh, we've been told that they'll be joining us shortly as soon as they take that commercial break. But one thing they are assuring us is that Theirs is unstoppable move and Kenyans should be watching keenly what will be unfolding in the next few days. And talking of what will be unfolding in the next few, few days, I managed to talk to one member of the NRM or the NASA swearing in uh, or the People's Assembly uh, Organizing Committee uh, who has uh, mentioned to me that tomorrow for the first time since that seven-member team was named by the co-chairs uh, James uh, Johnson Modama and uh, Bonnie Halwale, they've uh, decided that tomorrow they will be giving the first ever uh, communication to the media to outline their uh, chain of activities from tomorrow whose culmination will be Tuesday 12th. Remember that yesterday we witnessed some uh, developments. Of course, now they've uh, sent invites to at least uh, over 10 counties where uh, they are under the NASA command, uh, actually informing the governors to be on standby for what will be following once or uh, what will be happening on uh, 12th. That exactly comes at the, against the background, the fact that uh, NASA's activities in the capital have not been that easy in the past few days. And therefore, in what appears to be a change of tactic or a diversionary tactic, uh, perhaps to uh, stretch security apparatus, they've uh, decided to send communication to 10 at least 11 county uh, governors informing them that uh, come 12th, that NASA might be conducting that particular ritual in their territory. Of course, that one uh, throws the net wider in that uh, you cannot be able to tell exactly who will be, uh, where they will be, but they've said that this will be a very, very uh, secretive uh, event, and uh, I'm glad to... Uh, inform you that uh, now that I wanted to engage in what could be uh, speculative, I'm uh, happy to indicate that um, uh, Senator James Orengo, senior counsel, is joining us. Remember that I've said that we've tracked them to various uh, hotels. They are busy in meetings, but I can see him walking right where we are. So we'll be trying to put him to question to actually try and first of all tell us exactly what uh, do we expect. Uh, Senator James Orengo, kindly if you could uh, join us here. Uh, this year on the big story uh, live, maybe sorry for interrupting your meeting. I can see minds are our heads are being put together. First of all, your reaction to what uh, the Attorney General has uh, said today uh, in regard to the event that NASA is putting in place next week. I, I haven't heard him uh, word for word. In fact, I didn't watch uh, on telly what he said. Uh, but I've gathered what he has said in the social media. Unfortunately, the Attorney General is the head of the bar. I mean, traditionally, is the head of the bar. When he's making pronouncements, he should make statements which have got the imprint of the law of the land or the constitution. But when he makes statements that makes him look like a propagandist uh, for the uh, ruling party, so to speak, uh, then one begins to lose faith in that office. He is supposed not just to be talking on behalf of the government of the day, but he's also uh, to be uh, is is expected to talk on behalf of the country because in, on matters legal is not the chief legal officer just for the government but it's the highest 
law office in the land in the constitutional dispensation that we have. But let me say this. Treason is not an easy offense to prove. First of all, the law of treason as it exists in Kenya today is an exemplification of the law of treason as it was when England was an absolute monarchy. Uh, and you remember John Joe used to make those t statements that, you know, if you embrace or uh, conceive or uh, imagine the death of, of a president, uh, then you'll be triable for treason. It is not as easy as that. In fact, you cannot remember, if I ask you the question, when was the last civilian tried and convicted for the offense of treason? Not even during the colonial days. I know there was these trials through the, through the court martials where they, they, they were charged for treason. But for a civilian to be charged for an offense of treason under the law as it exists, even under the colonial penal code, is not an easy offense uh, to prove. First, it entails the overthrow or plotting to overthrow, and I emphasize the word overthrow through unlawful means. And I emphasize the word unlawful, uh, the government of, of Kenya. Now, uh, uh, first of all, you, you, you must begin to get evidence that one is making preparation is, is planning in a concrete fashion to overthrow uh, the government through unconstitutional or unlawful means. And then the law of treason also requires that, you know, you must prove certain overt acts. And you need two witnesses to every overt act. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, that is a long shot. He is uh, using threats. And I think he is li living at, uh, uh, at a different type. We, uh, uh, Kenya is, still in, is, is, in, is not a colony anymore. Right. And, and therefore, what I want to say is this. Uh, what is being planned and what we are talking about has nothing to do with anything which is going to happen outside the Constitution and the law of the land. And we, and, and we are advising, we are giving that advice and we are planning within the realms of the constitutional case. Senior counsel, the Attorney General cites uh, that uh, any person who can be sworn in as president must have been uh, declared by IBC and must be sworn in as the Chief Justice. And that's why he said that anything against that is, means it uh, goes against the constitution and therefore the person who uh, takes the oath or who facilitates the same would be actionable under action under section 40 of the penal no, code it will still not constitute treason unless uh, i need to go back to the law school but between me and the, the attorney general on this point he is the one who needs to go back to the law school and taking an oath in itself is not enough uh, probably one can imagine that one is taking an unlawful oath uh, but what is an unlawful oath also must be uh, prescribed by the constitution or the law uh, so I, I, I think this is just uh, a conduct of an officer who is trying to issue threats and intimidate and blackmail. And that is not going to work out. It, it will not happen. You are at the center of uh, uh, the crafting and uh, subsequent promulgation of the Constitution. And uh, the county assemblies is when uh, they came into effect. The Attorney General says what county assemblies is calling them purported approval of motions is uh, illegal and also null and void uh, and such. And he says that uh, it's only parliament that can establish the such. And uh, parliament has not uh, delegated county assemblies to approve establishment of uh, people's assembly. Uh, where does, uh, do we draw the line in terms of uh, uh, putting in place such institutions, given that we have county assemblies and, then, and parliament? He should go and read those motions again. It is a resolution. It is not a law that has been passed by the county assemblies in order to create a, a statutory or constitutional organ, you need to enact some legislation, including subsidiary legislation. Many times even parliament passes motions, uh, and motions are merely resolutions. The constitution of these county assemblies is not a statutory act, it is an act by the people of Kenya. And by the way, you know, the law of the land, which is the constitution, 
was enacted by the people of Kenya. It was not enacted by parliament. Go and read that preamble to the constitution. It is enacted by the people of Kenya. So the people of Kenya and any body that is recognized under the constitution or which exists outside the constitution, because everything cannot be registered under the law, a family cannot be registered under the law, a clan cannot be registered under the law. If today we sit as a clan and resolve that we want to start some organization or society to promote some function, that, that, you don't need to go to, to parliament to pass that. So what the county assemblies resolve is a resolution supporting what we declared as a political party and as a coalition. It has nothing to do with uh, the functions of the county assemblies in relation to the functions of the county governments. Uh, it is like uh, parliament can pass a resolution in support of, uh, let's say, an organization in, in Nigeria pursuing uh, the, um, the, the inclusivity, uh, you know, uh, kind of proposal. Uh, let's say, for example, you know, there, there may be communities in Nigeria who are being oppressed. And we as a, a, a parliament can say we are, we are resolving by, by, by parliament, you know, to support such a group. Many times the parliament in America passes the resolutions about Kenya, about what is happening in Kenya. It's not legislation. Uh, so what, what I want to say is that uh, let not the attorney general intimidate or blackmail constitutional organs. Uh, and let me not go over and beyond what his role is. His role is advisory, uh, not to blackmail. In fact, the Attorney General should be making Kenyans feel good about their country. Uh, what a good country it is where people can enjoy their fundamental rights and basic rights. Mm -hmm. uh, not, not to be like uh, some tin pot dictator who is warning people all the time. Mm -hmm. That's Kenya of uh, bygone years. There's also concern on uh, activities and who is funding the county assemblies. There was uh, initially communication from the National Assembly Majority, Majority Leader Eden Duale to the control of budget that uh, they need to scrutinize the funds that are being used. And the AG has today pronounced himself and said that they might be compelled to surcharge county assemblies if at all they are using the monies to bankroll the activities of uh, NRM or NASA. Uh, maybe they idea of uh, uh, surcharging? If the national government cannot surcharge those who stole money in relation to NYS or in, uh, in relation to Eurobond, you know, they cannot now be, you know, uh, showing that they're holier than, uh, than everybody. Yeah, but the, the, the position is that the county assemblies that have, you know, processed these motions have not used any public funds and no public funds are going to be used. And public funds are spent when they are budgeted. And there is a, a resolution of either the county assembly or the national assembly and the Senate for that money to be spent. The authority of the legislature is important. Uh, so I, I think this is just, you know, yapping uh, because we know the law. Uh, we cannot make these county assemblies spend money that is not meant for the purpose for which they are, they are going to be spent. Finally, before I let you go back to your meeting, uh, yesterday we've seen a new twist. Uh, over 10 letters have been sent to different county governments. Uh, we understand more letters are being sent as more county assemblies approve that motion. Uh, what is the game plan now, three days, four days to December 12th? We shall make a comprehensive statement about that one, either tomorrow or on Saturday. Uh, uh, but I better leave it at that for the moment. But, uh, definitely we'll have an activity on uh, 12th December. Well, 12th of December is an important day for us and for Kenyans as a whole. And for the uh, NASA fraternity, is even a bigger day and we look forward to it. And uh, if you don't mind, uh, today uh, you are 
leader, NRM leader, now now that it's a resistance movement, uh, he has uh, uh, said that uh, the, the U.S., the diplomats, have no say to tell uh, him to follow the Constitution. And he has mentioned to the fact that they kept silent, perhaps, when NASA needed them more. Uh, does it mean NASA is now defying uh, uh, other parties and is in it on its own? No, we cannot defy. And America remains a friend of Kenya. And we want those good relations to, to continue. Uh, during the colonial days, uh, we had a lot of positive relationships. Uh, when um, they opposed the colonial system, not just in Kenya, but generally. Uh, but we must also say that the United States does not always, uh, you know, um, use its uh, power and authority to advance. Uh, uh, you know, all the positive causes in history. I mean, uh, look at what uh, has happened in Zaire, uh, uh, Congo, during Mobutu's time. Uh, I mean, uh, they, they, has a, they have a story to say. Uh, and uh, until there was world pressure on the United States, uh, one cannot but remember what happened in South Africa until they decided to uh, confront the racist South Africa with, 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 uh, with sanctions. So we are friends, and we want that relationship to continue. Uh, but just as they pontificate, uh, there, there are instances also where they have not been quite right or, or they have not been on the right side of history. And since our constitution is built on the gains of... Uh, the movement for human rights and democracy all over the world and the words of the American Constitution and the Kenyan Constitution, if you look at the preamble, the first three words, we the people, you know, uh, this came out of the American Constitution. It's not something very original. So we are saying um, to the extent to which we are a sovereign nation and a sovereign country, uh, they cannot dictate uh, what happens in this country. Uh, there must be equality of arms. They should talk to both sides. Uh, but in, for them to have the moral high ground, uh, they, must be, they must continue to be the uh, impartial arbiter, if they want to be, so to speak, uh, instead of being seen to take sides. But we are engaging with, with them. We continue to engage with them. And we are very happy to engage with them, and we want that to continue. Finally, is there pressure that a dialogue takes center stage and perhaps formation of a, a coalition government? Is there pressure from any quarter? No, no. Uh, not that I know of. Uh, but uh, this is one country at the end of the day. If you want Kenya to be what our framers of the Constitution wanted Kenya to be, one indivisible nation then we must talk to each other. And if we refuse to talk to each other, then it means that we are not living uh, in accordance or we are not conducting our affairs in accordance with the Constitution and the law of Kenya. Well, thank you very much and thank you for your time. Thank you. Sharon, uh, there you go, Senior Counsel and Sire Senator James Sorengo, uh, walking back to that uh, high-level meeting. Uh, there are very senior members of uh, NASA that uh, they are currently meeting in this particular part of uh, town, and you've heard him uh, stating categorically their stand and his responses to what the Attorney General Professor Githu Muigai had to say earlier in the day. Over to you, Sharon. Well, many thanks, Duncan Kayemba, our lead reporter, uh, for that discussion, comprehensive discussion with uh, Senior Counsel James Orengo, CIA Senator, as well. Well, we want to take a short break now here on the big story, but don't go too far because I have in studio advocates Harrison Kinyanjui and Dr. Eric Komolo, with whom I shall, ha I shall be having more discussion on the same. So don't go too far. We shall have that discussion when we return.